So you might be trying to figure out exactly how to go ahead and use Linux. Now this completely, now if you have zero experience with any of this stuff, I'll try to keep it as high level as possible. There's many ways to go ahead and run Linux on your machine. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now the way I have it right now is through Ubuntu, but there's a lot of different ways you can go through and basically have, you know, a Linux operating system on your particular, you know, on your particular machine. So there's a lot of different ones and this tutorial will be using Ubuntu, but you can use Linux Mint, you can use, you know, Fedora. There's a lot of other ones you can use as well. I personally prefer Ubuntu, but there's a lot of other ones you can choose. Now the way you can get it to work, now I have a Mac right now, right? The process of kind of going through and getting it to work on your machine is usually just by going through and downloading some sort of virtual machine or a bootable USB disk or bootable USB drive and installing it on your, your machine. Now, I think the easiest way of going through and installing it on a machine that already exists is by using virtualization. So just getting it virtualized on your machine. I still have access to everything on my Mac, on my PC, but I just have it basically running as a separate machine on my computer. Now, it's not going to be as powerful sometimes. It's going to have some weird stuff. It's not going to be as native, but it's still going to be pretty much 95% there for the everyday average person. So if you want to get started, you can download some sort of, you know, virtualization tool. There's UTM, which is a free one. There's many other ones you can download too. And I like UTM because it does allow you to just download things just straight out the box. So it doesn't have you like, you don't have to download things separately. There's profiles you can download automatically. And it just takes like a couple, you know, minutes depending on your, you know, Wi-Fi speed to go and download it. Now, after downloading this, you want to download your flavor of Linux that you want to install. Now, like I said, personally, for me, I personally do prefer Ubuntu, but you can choose whichever one you want to. Ubuntu is free. It's pretty popular. I think this is the one most pop people, it's either this or Linux Mint are usually the ones people, you know, download, but you can choose whichever one you want. I personally, like I said before, prefer Ubuntu and you can download Ubuntu if you want to this way. So you can download Ubuntu desktop. If you go to their website, ubuntu.com, you can download it this way. Or if you already downloaded UTM, you can also download the profile there virtually, you know, from their store. So when you have it fully installed, you'll basically come into your Linux machine. Now, depending on, again, which version of Ubuntu, which version of Linux Mint, whichever one you downloaded, there's going to be a different tutorial on both. Like I said, in this case, we're going through Ubuntu. Now, the way it works, the way the system works, it's pretty basic. So on the top side, you'll basically have your status bar. So this will have things like your activities in the very top left. So if you click here, it'll just show you straight up your activities, different windows you might have open. Your time and your date will show up right here. And if you tap on it, it'll go and give you a little calendar. So this can actually show you exactly what's going on, if you have any events planned. And I actually do think this looks super, super clean. And you can even turn on your machine on do not disturb mode right there. Now you can also go through in the top right corner, you can you know increase or decrease your volume just by moving this up and down. And you can quickly power off or power on your machine. You can also do your you know, wired options here. You can jump right into settings and you can power off and log out right here. Now, the screen right here in the middle, this is pretty going to be pretty basic with every machine you basically buy. This can house a bunch of your folders. If you have any files, you can move those things around here too. You can right click on this you know, kind of desktop and you can get into a new folder, select all, you can arrange icons. Show desktop and files. You can open in the terminal, which is going to be a really, really big thing you're probably going to end up doing in Linux. You can change your background, desktop icon settings, and display settings. So you can go and modify those things just by right clicking here. Now, on the left side, we'll just house a bunch of different applications that you have. So it comes native with Firefox, which is probably one of the more popular web browsers out there. So you can jump right into Firefox right into here, and you can get access to it, which is a really, really cool thing. Now, you also have all these other applications here, Thunderbird Mail, Files, so many other ones. But when you have a window open, how do you even end up closing it? Well, if you want to close it, you can always do a couple of things. You can minimize a window by clicking on this minimize button right up there. And that will minimize the application back into your, into your sidebar right here. Now, you can also maximize a window by clicking onto this maximize window or minimize window. Or if you want to completely exit out of an application, you can click on the X button at the very top right, click on X, and it will go ahead and close that application for you. Now, the files application is another very big one. This is one you're probably going to end up using a lot, especially if you're a developer. You're probably going to go through and you're essentially probably going to be using these things all the time to basically code out and do a bunch of other things like that if you need to. So that is probably going to be a really big thing you're going to end up doing here too. 
and you have access to go and you know change your folders around or add fo files and folders here too. And like we said before, you can go and click on the X button to exit out of that. Now you have the ability of going into your trash here too, and you can click on the share. If you want to go into your shared drives or anything like that, you have the type of capability of going right into there and it can take a little bit of time, but that's essentially that. Now, if you want to see all the applications you have, you can click onto the show applications portion, which is in the bottom left corner right up here. And this will bring you into this page. It'll show you your windows right here. So the different types of windows you have, you can type to search. If you want to just directly just go into a search bar, you can search for something for your computer or online right here. And then you have all the applications that you have. So if you want to, you can start going through and start opening up these applications. So if I wanted to go through and open up my calculator, I can open up my calculator this way. If I want to go and open up any other application, I can go through and kind of modify those there. The terminal is another very big app we're going to get into in a second. But you have, you know, your camera app, you have uh, software and, you know, updates if you want to go through and, you know, download an update or anything like that. You have that type of capability of going through and downloading and installing these updates this way as well, which is another really cool thing. Now going back into here, there's some other pages of apps too. You have Vim installed in here too if you need to use a code editor. But the big thing too is probably your software terminal, like your terminal itself. So if you want to, you can open up your terminal and this is where you can start actually coding out any of your you know, Linux code that you actually want to. So there's a lot of different commands that you can basically use within Linux. I'm sure a lot of you know this. And I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description that gives you a quick tutorial on a lot of the Linux code because there's so many different things you can go down here. But essentially some of the basic ones that are available online that some people know. One of the basic commands is ls. So what this does is it lists the directories in your machine. So if you type in ls, it'll show you all the different types of directories that are on your computer. This can be pretty important if you just want to see a list of all the machine, like folders that are on your computer if you need to dig down into a certain one. PWD is one that prints your working directory. So let's say you're coding out a project and you need to see where your code is, you know, where your files are stored or whatever. Well, you can go through and basically see that my directory is here. And if you want to change your directory, you can do that by using CD, which is pretty common. And you can change it to a different directory. So if I wanted to change it to, let's say this one again or something like that, I can just do CD. I can just go through and just paste it there if I can even copy and paste, so I can't even do that. But you can essentially you know, CD to a different you know, directory and you have that option of doing that there too. Now, on top of that, you can also do MKDIR if you wanna go ahead and make a new directory. So you can go through, do this, it will go and create a directory for you. You have to specify exactly what you want, but that's another example. Now, MV, this command MV, will go ahead and move files for you, or it can rename files. So let's say I had a file inside of my files you know, panel. So if I had a file under here and I wanted to change the name of it, well, I would be able to go through, copy the file path to this particular folder. I wouldn't recommend doing it to any of your main files, but copy a file, paste it here, then you can move and you know rename a file this way. CP will end up copying files. RM will rename files and you know, delete directories if you need to. Touch will create empty files, which is really cool. So if you want to go ahead and create an empty file, you can use that via touch. If you want to create symbolic lines to other files, you can click on LN. That will go and do that for you. And if you want to clear the terminal display, you can go and type in clear, and that will go ahead and clear the display for you. So there's a lot of different codes. That's just a super high level thing to kind of keep in mind there. Ultimately, though, there's a lot of things you can do within, you know, Linux. There's, I mean, there's different you know, versions of Linux you can install. I mean, it's really, really cool. Ubuntu, like I said before, is probably one of the more popular ones, but Linux Mint is also out there. So ultimately, that's kind of a quick way in how to get started and kind of beginning your you know, development journey within Ubuntu or Linux. If you have any thoughts or questions, though, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button. That would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.